Hi friends, welcome back. In the last step, we saw the microservices. I will I introduced you the world of microservices, and in this step, we will see the what are the challenges of microservices any organization face. So you know the microservices architecture is more more complex than the legacy system. The microservices environment becomes more complicated because the individual team or the group of team will have to manage and support many moving and running microservices. So let's see what are the main challenges that you can face in microservices. So first is the bounded context. So we see like every microservices has some boundary some sets of boundary so every microservices is lies with some boundary what is the scope of the microservices so it should not like one microservices is going beyond the boundary and implementation and implementing some other functionality so basically uh, it promotes the object model first approach to service defining a data model that service is responsible for and to bound to okay so basically it clarifies so whenever you writing the microservices you usually some define the boundary clear concept boundary what the microservices is going to do what is the proposed implementation of the particular microservices okay so this is how it will look like one microservices is communicating with other other is another so everyone has some boundary okay so sometimes if you are not defining the boundary correctly it will be very difficult to manage because it's every microservices you can consider is a subdomain the another is the configuration management so i am showing you only the four microservices it can have the 50 microservices and in microservices configuration is done in a centralized place so all the microservices will be using and accessing the configuration at the same place so if you have not managed the configuration effectively it will be very difficult to you to analyze and manage which microservices will retrieve the configuration okay and how it will be used so it need to be effectively used otherwise it will be a big problem the another is dynamic scale up and dynamic scale down so in the last step we saw the how how the microservices should go scale up and scale down okay so like giving an example like the particular microservices is having the less node okay it it is fine for the one instance but when the more load is coming it should be bring the another instance so how you are achieving through the load balancing so you should be able to manage the load correctly so suppose there is a microservices two are running we have a four instance so how the load will be distributed among these mac these instance so that is more important you will have to implement if you are not implementing correctly okay you will have to lose the resources you will not be able to use the resources effectively okay so what i explained the load on the different microservices may be different instances of the different type okay so you know uh, the load balancing of this microservices will have different technique to man to managing the load this will have a different technique to managing the load okay so basically if you uh, you know like in a cloud if you are managing effectively it will reduce the cost of the microservices because um, some cost are associated in a, in a cloud to a scale up and a scale down and maintaining the load balancing okay let's see move ahead the other is monitoring so you have n number of microservices okay so it's very difficult okay to monitor what is going inside the microservices you cannot just go to the log and check okay individually you cannot go to the individual log you cannot uh, go to the individual microservices to check where that got broke the functionality 
so it's not the traditional way of monitoring will not align well with the macro services because we have a multiple service are running in the system okay when the error comes or any exception comes it will be very difficult to find the role uh, find the root cause and it can be challenging okay the fault tolerance it is the very important in the macro services if the one macro services are getting down your whole macro services application your overall application should not be the breakdown what does it mean okay it means fault tolerance is the individual service it will not allow to bring down the overall system it will give you the certain degree of satisfaction when the failure occurs without fault tolerance a single failure in the system may cause the total breakdown your whole application can break down it's not like a monolithic application so that you will have to implement the fault tolerance in your application if you are not maintaining it, you can imagine how it will be difficult you to run and monitor the system other is cyclic dependency and the pack of cards okay what does it mean it mean that suppose you have a num n number of macro services it should not be the cyclic dependency one macro services is depend upon the other the other is depend upon the other and it going into the round 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 policy it should not be the fall into the deadlock condition so this functionality is very much important so it should not make the cyclic dependency if not identified and resolved promptly you can see how the horrible situations can be so this was all about the challenges generally we face in the in the in the micro services okay so bye for now see you in the next step thank you